Good evening everyone, it's Julie at Craftsacute and welcome back to my channel. I, in the last video, mentioned I wanted to do a, a consensus on those who would like to see any one of those cornucopia items um, to be made, but I ran into a couple of young gals. Um, I did get uh, one of the girls' name, her name is Carrie Danielle. Hello, Carrie. And I didn't, I failed to get the other gal's young, uh, the young lady's name. And I feel so terrible. But I, in speaking with them <clears throat> at Hobby Lobby, we were having a chat there. And I did say that I would come on and do a video on, like, novice, beginner, um, uh, like crochet terms to help them get to understand how to um, to to get to know them and then do the process of uh, manipulating these stitches. So, <clears throat> excuse me, hang on. I'm going to pause real quick and get a drink of water. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> I think my throat is a little starting to get scratchy because I've been working on this project for a couple of days religiously. First of all, getting the terms done, um, crochet terms. Um, I do have this. If you want to go and retrieve this, it's in my Facebook group, Junk Journal Depot. I downloaded a PDF of all of these these instructions, these terms, um, and process of how to, you know, make them or do them or work them into stitches. So if you would like to learn how to crochet, I've only been doing this for about a month. That's when like a week prior to ha making three um, nanny huggy lovey octopuses okay um, I chunked out two and what I did was I studied the terms I hadn't written them down well I did on in a notebook like chicken scratch um, so what I did is took the time to go through each term that I know that I've learned and put them down um, in P on a PDF and then I thought we'd go through this um, each one I don't think we'll get to all of them this will probably be a series of um, three or four because there's a lot and what I would like to do is just take my time and show you how to do them not rushing because a lot of them what they do is they do a stitch and then a couple of them and then they'll say I'll meet you back at the other end so they'll speed it up and then get to the end and it's like well you know I wish they would someone just you know help I mean go slower right so you can actually see it now there's one lady that I watched she does that but that's more like immediate I would say like close to advanced work and it's advanced work so I I don't want to, I'll probably share her link sometime in to the next video. I won't do that now, but in case you want to try. But I figured this is for the beginner who can, if you study this and practice it, you can get, you can do an intermediate and advanced work. I've only been doing this for a month. I've made three octopuses. And a huge, if you guys seen on my channel, a huge um, loggerhead sea turtle. Um, but it's getting used to using your crochet hooks, okay? Because each one produces a, a different size gauge, okay? Now, if I used this tiny one, a 3.75, 3 these 
stitches here would be smaller and tighter. And for a coaster, that's not what you want. Now, let me see. Let me show you this one here. This is a single crochet using, I believe, a five point, it may have been a five millimeter hook that I used for this. But this I made, um, this was my first, one of my first makes practicing these terms. Um, and right now I use it as a, you know, when I have a bowl of ice cream, I'll sit it on here and so that my hands don't freeze and, or I'll use it for, you know, put my things on there so they don't slide off the table because they do when you've got yarn all over the place, they get slid here and there just from the yarn. So I just kind of put it right here on this. So it has multiple uses for me. Anyhow, now I, after having created the PDF, now as a disclosure, these are not my terms I've made up. I've just put the terms down and typed in what, how I understand the stitches. And so far it's been successful because if you go to my junk journal site, uh, junk journal depots, you'll see the things I've created and that's advanced work. Okay. So, and this, I would call this an intermediate, you know, like a, like a practicing beginner intermediate work right here. Uh, the, I want to start off if you guys are interested. Now this part gets pretty te technical. If you could see that this part right here has got wide holes in them. And these are chain um, one spaces that you create so that you can crochet this leaf into it. And this is how it comes out. And it this thing looks kind of wonky, but it'll straighten itself out once I get the third leaf on. Okay, um, because these are rather thick. I, I was kind of upset. I, back here, I just loosely tied this off so I can, I'll go in and stitch them in. But I was pretty upset at the fact that these came out really thick. I mean, it's supposed to, I guess, but that's a lot of wasted yarn. I mean, for me, I, to me, it's a waste because this yarn I buy at Hobby Lobby, it's $4.99 unless you get a, you get the deals that's 50% off and things like that. And it becomes, it's a lot cheaper. Definitely never go to Michael's way too expensive way too expensive. I had to return some stuff there and then went to Hobby Lobby because I thought, my goodness, it's so much cheaper. Hobby Lobby people or any other market that you find maybe online. But I use this yarn. Let me get my glasses on. It's a low fiber fill. It's really plushy and soft. And um, this is a size four low fill fiber. I'm still learning all the different types of yarn. This doesn't say it's worsted, but when you want to crochet, use it, this, you know, to crochet something, they recommend a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay. That's a USJ 10. Um, but I used a, let's see, what, five, 0.75 to do to do these leaves because when I initially did the six oh my gosh it was so thick that I thought that was a lot of yarn wasted so I unraveled it and went to this hook a um, 5.75 okay from a six and then um, I took this 5.5 out thinking I might go ahead and try it and use that, but it was too tight. So that's why you should practice and get to know how your hooks work as far as tension. So I used the 5.75 and then the 3.75 definitely I used for the stems. Okay. With a stem here 
you want to use the 3.75. So again, you want to get a range of hooks that um, will allow you to complete a project. Um, I started out, oh goodness gracious, not knowing all the hooks and the what to use for the weight of yarn and things like that. That was all trial and error through these. <laughs> this is right here. There was a lot of unraveling. <laughs> okay, so um, anyway, what if you want to learn this one, it is it is probably a ladder beginner. Or if you practice these terms, there's like how many pages? Like, let's see, I think there were four pages. Four pages. Well, no, actually, the fourth page is my information and my disclosure, but three pages of terms that I've learned personally myself for me to create these beautiful works of, um, I would call it amigurumi and crocheted items. So I thought we'd work on this, not tonight, but I want to show you to get started in order for us to get to this point we want to do this circle and this circle people refer to it as the magic ring but the magic ring is so much different from a chain four ring like a chain ring that's what that's what i'm referring it to okay a chain ring because I haven't seen an abbreviation for it, so I just, that's my personal reference to what a lot of them use. And let me show you, let's see, I think you might be able to see the stitches better on this one. I was gonna use this green, but it's too dark. I don't think you'll be able to see the stitches. We'll try this one out first, okay? So, what you wanna do, let's start off with the chain ring that's a ch on this if you guys want to download it do it and then you can follow along but i do want to begin this video with a chain ring because this is what i use to start this off instead of just a magic ring and i'll show you the difference between two between the both of them okay so i'm going to go ahead and use my 5.75 because that's what i created the body with so when you put your, you want to put your thread here in your, in your hand, okay? And then when you want to do this, you want to do it, you would want to start off with a, a loop, okay? And so what I do is take my finger, okay, let me go through that very slowly again. Got my little yarn right here. Let me see, let me zoom in. Okay, I think you guys can see that better. So you want to lay your yarn out here, kind of leave a long tail. This would probably be the length of your tail here. You want to leave that in because you want to re weave it in. So I put it over my finger, my index finger, and I loop it around and then I hold it here with the tail. Okay, so then I take this first loop, I bring it over on top of this one then I take this one, then I bring it over and see how this, by pulling on this, it pushes this first yarn to the back. And then I bring that forward, see that? And then I grab this and I use that to pull that down and then take your tail and pull it up just pull it down and it'll bring up your loop oops what's going on here um only on camera but that's kind of weird that's the first for me let me do it again i'm going to bring wrap it around my finger bring it over stick it here i'm going to bring this over this one grab this second yarn the the one i just pulled over and then put this underneath so it looks like that and I bring my hook in and I just 
pull the tail down, okay? So let me do that again. Let's do that again. So I yarn over my finger, yarn over my finger again, bring this around right here under this thumb. Is this what this looks like? And I take this yarn, put it on top of this one, the front one. Then I take this one and pull it through. Look at my finger. See, as it tightens, my finger comes through it and creates that, a slip knot. Okay? So you want the slip knot and then pull through with your tail. Pull down to tighten it up against your hook. So now, this, I bring, drop this tail and I bring this forward. Okay? And so what I do is I get my little pinky and I go under here and this is how I end up holding my loop, the slip knot, okay, or yeah, a slip knot. And then I take, I'm holding this knot right there, kind of with my finger, fingernail, very lightly, but firm. And then I take this and I yarn over bring it through so that's your chain one and we want to do chain four chains so my second one my third one and my fourth one and then I will hold this right here I will hold that okay and then I will hang on to my thread. Oh, I need to get some more thread. Okay, and then I'd grab onto my thread again. I'm going to grab that knot very lightly. I'm going to push my little yarn right here on this hook down a little bit because now I want to come towards the front, slip it into the first chain, yarn over, pull through, pull through and what I'm going to do is just toss that back there because now we have this as you can see and then what we're going to do oops yeah no it's going to stay like right there sorry you don't want to toss that over we'll do it again and then you want to take your hook yarn over Some people like doing this yarn over into a, oops, hang on, a single crochet. Some do that like that to hold your, you just want to pull that shut like that a little bit. And then this right in here, here's your little knot area, here's your chain area, but the, here is where you're going to this is where you're going to start your first row of chaining okay now your chain stitches but which one are we going to be doing today i thought we for this project it's a double crochet okay which is which is a dc you can look on the notes it's a the abbreviation is dc which means double crochet okay so now what I'm going to do is, here's my little opening right here, okay? Oh, that's when someone wants to do a single stitch. For my project here, let's undo this, and let's do it again. We're going to wrap the finger, we're going to loop it around or yarn over twice. So here it is, one, two. I'm going to hold it, then I'm going to take this back yarn, put it to the front, then I'm going to take this yarn, pull it, start pulling it upwards, and you'll see that yarn go back, and then you can just pull this over, and that's what that looks like. 
and then I just slip my hook in there and then I close it by pulling down the tail okay and now I am going to chain four okay I'm gonna hold this knot right here can you guys see that and a chain one whoops let me grab that now remember guys I'm still a beginner too but have done some intermediate and advanced work so here's my chain one two three four and I'm going to grab that put my finger on there so if this ever happens to you this loop this long loop which we don't want just kind of start pulling on this chain with your finger kind of create some tension and pull it up so it, this loop is snug onto your chain but not too snug but hold it steady so now we're going to go into this chain one i don't know if you guys could see that if i'm holding it right if I'm not holding it correctly for you guys to see it well enough, let me know. So I'm going to insert my hook into this first chain. Okay. I'm inserting it, throwing that loop back right there. Okay. And then taking my... Let's just move that out of the way a little bit. So that's what that looks like. Okay. Okay. Here's the chain here's the opening right there and then I'm going to get my yarn I'm going to yarn over pull through this loop and then I'm going to take that loop and pull it into a slip knot okay and then to hold this in place I am going to now chain one okay so there you can see a little hole can you see that see that that baby hole right there that's where you're going to work your stitches in okay so chaining one sort of locks it in place without it doesn't actually lock it but it kind of holds the the chain closed without sliding open your it will widen as you continue when you continue to add stitches okay so this is that what I refer to as a chain ring but people will just say oh we're gonna do a magic ring and I'm gonna chain four I'm like wait a minute but I've seen so many people do a magic ring so then for this project this is what i've done now if you don't want to do this project because of this i can do another one that doesn't use this but i'll show you the i will show you the magic ring the abbreviation mr okay so now i'm holding this with this tail okay down all right and first of all let me tighten up my little loop there I am going to chain three okay so we're gonna chain three okay one two three and this chain three is going to act as your first double stitch okay so then you want to take this let's we're going to now create a, an actual first double crochet so you want to yarn over hold it see you're holding it then you want to bring it through that tiny little loop there insert it grab your yarn which is yarning over and pull it through so now we've got three loops on this hook so now you want to yarn over this is a double crochet bring it through one two hold on to your loops you've got two left on there 
and then you want to yarn over and bring it through one two so now that's your first double crochet really actually your second because this first stitch chain is a double crochet okay that's just the term and that's just the way they do it in the like when they start off with these circles especially if you're working in double stitches single stitch would be a chain one okay if i'm doing working single crochets so now to go back into that tiny little hole i'm holding my tail down okay still and now I'm going to loop over or yarn over, which we'll say yarn over because that's the correct terms. Then pull it, push it, insert it through that little hole again, yarn over, pull your yarn through, then yarn over, pull through the first and second loop, hold on to these two loops and then yarn over again and pull through and pull through that completes your double crochet right there okay one more time through these chain rings yarn over get find your little hole there insert it yarn over pull it out or pull through then yarn over and pull through two hold on to your loops yarn over and pull through two again so that's your double crochet and for this project I did 16 of these in this okay so I'm going to take this out and I want to show you the magic ring because people in doing this project, you can still do this project using this magic ring. Okay. But the, the tutorial that I watched on this, she did the chain ring, but I wanted to show you that because a lot of people use this, this chain ring, which is a, um, you know, chain four, and then you start your, um, stitches. A lot of people use it but I was comfortable in doing using the chain the the magic ring and it took me a while to get this okay so again here's your tail okay my hands look kind of wonky huh I don't know if my husband was using my look at that my hands don't have stuff on it it just looks really weird hang on a second Let me see if I can do that okay I added in another light okay so magic ring at the top of your list I'm actually I'm gonna do another one of these I'm gonna do a different one which is simpler but really cool okay you'll have uh, I'll let you know but let's get to the magic ring so you've got your tail and then you bring it around two of these fingers seen it bring it around and then i'm creating an x and i'm holding it down with my pinky <laughs> okay so then you take your hook bring it under grabbing this thread bringing it through and twisting it and then bring yarning over and bringing it through this first chain and there is the magic ring okay practice these two things practice which one you would like to use okay because this will begin a project i'll do a really good simple beginner project coaster which is you know theme let's get this done autumn because what's cool is you could give these gifts as a hostess gift to whoever whoever is hosting your thanksgiving dinner 
you can make a bunch of coasters that would be cool on a table, right? So let's just take that out and let's do it again. So here we go. Tail. Here's, is this in your way? No, I'm going to have to hold on to it. Okay, here we go. Here's your tail, holding it down with your thumb, taking your two fingers right here, wrapping it around, wrapping it around, turning your hand over, creating an X. Here's my little X. Then I'm taking my hook and I'm going under, over and pulling it through. And as I'm pulling it through, I'm twisting it. Then I'm holding it. And then I'm taking this and grabbing, on, hooking onto this thread and then pulling it through that loop. Now we have a magic ring. And how this magic ring works, okay? So here's my working yarn. I'm gonna wrap it around my hand. I'm gonna grab these two, these two strings right here. And I'm going to do, let's do a single crochet. How about that? Or do you, let's see on that one I'm going to do, are we using single crochets? Let's just practice the double crochets. Okay, let's just do that and then we'll get into the single crochet. Well, here's your, your loop. You want to chain, we're going to chain three. Okay, one, two, See, I'm holding on to this right here and pulling this up and bringing down three. Okay, so that's my first double crochet. Still holding on to this. Now, often, like me, I have to create the tension on my yarn right here. Okay, so now I'm going to yarn over, holding on to it. Okay, then I'm going to bring it, I'm taking it through this loop. And I'm grabbing onto this yarn, yarn over, bring it around, having tension. See, I'm still holding on to it. Okay, and then yarn over, bring it through two loops, and then bring it through two loops. Okay, and there's double crochet and then you could do it again I'm going to create tension I'm still holding on to this because I don't want to lose it I don't want to lose the tension here either okay so <clears throat> grabbing onto my yarn how I'm doing that my working yarn here's my pinky I'm sliding it into my pinky and I'm bringing my hand underneath that yarn and there's the tension I need then I'm going to yarn over bring it under into that loop. I'm inserting it and then I'm grabbing this on and then it, it'll turn or use your finger to turn it, holding on to that tension right here, this last loop. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two and then I'm going to hold on to this and then I'm going to pull through two. That's why it's so important in here. I've got three double crochets now on this. So I'm hoping something's happening. I hope I, okay. I just lost myself. I didn't lose you guys. My screen just went blank, black. Okay, so here's that. So let's do this again. This is your magic ring. Now I'm gonna get grab my tension on my pinky right there. It's not gonna be too tight, but it's enough to slide, okay? And then I'm going to bring it around this, bring it around, creating my tension. Well, first of all, okay, I need to pull some more yarn. See how it gets hooked up on there? I need to get some more yarn here. So I'm going to hang on to my, I'm going to hang on to this. I'm going to grab my tension, loop it around, grab a hold of this. I'm going to do it again. 
So I'm going to take my working yarn, put it through my little pinky, and bring it around and see how it's looped over my index finger and then I'm going to pull this okay see my loop right here so if that happens what I do is just release that pull my thread down on my hook hold it then begin again here we go I'm getting my little pink yarn, my tension, bringing my hand underneath that. Now it's over my first, my index finger. Now I'm going to make another double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, holding it. My thumb is holding on to this. I'm going to insert it into that loop or the magic ring, bring it up. Okay, I still have tension from here and here on this last loop. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. If you can't, just do go slowly and one at a time till you're you practice, and then pull one at a time, pull one at a time. These are for beginners, not your advanced um, veterans. Okay, so be patient. So grabbing, see so I've got tension here, grabbing my little pinky, and I often do this. I'm until I can, okay, grab it. Then I'm dipping my hand down over this. So it's grabbing it, coming on top of my index finger. Okay, I still got tension here. And now I've grabbed this ring having tension. I'm going to yarn over, go underneath this magic ring, hook onto that yarning over, pulling it through, grab that with your finger as soon as it comes up. Okay, and then take your hook, yarn over, pull through one, then pull through two, and pull through yarn over and pull through and pull through there's your double crochet now check this out this is what a lot of people a lot of them do so i'm going to create my tension again so once you get practice this is what's going to happen you're going to yarn over pull through grab a hook yarning over oops yarn over pull through two Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, this is what's going to happen when you get a lot of practice. Yarn over, pulling through your magic ring, pulling through two, pulling through two. Okay, so that's why I go slowly. Okay, here we go again. I'm going to go slowly. Okay, yarn over. Insert into your magic ring, yarn over again, pull up. As soon as it comes up, grab onto it. Yarn over, pull through one. Oops. And that happens quite a bit. Okay, my loop is loose. I'm going to pull my working yarn, holding it tight, getting this in my pinky, going under my, so that the working yarn is on top of my, laying on top of my index finger. I'm grabbing onto this now. Now I'm going to yarn over, insert into the magic ring, yarn over, pull it up, and grab it. And then yarn over again, pull through one, pull through two, grab onto those loops, yarn over, pull through one, Pull through the second one. And that's your double crochet. Okay? So, in something like this, like if I'm going to do this ring, I would... I have 16 in here total. Okay? Because so I'm going to do this. This is my first one. Okay? Not 16, 15. 
wait, 15, 16, yeah, 16. It's my first, this chain three is my first. Then I'm doing, I'm gonna make 15 more around, okay? So I would make, this is, and you wanna count your stitches. If you lose count, okay? See this? This it does not count as a chain because it's not complete. Only count the chain work that clearly you could see a V. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So I've done seven double crochets. If I'm going to do 15, I'll show you what that looks like when it's pulled. Okay, well, let, let's just do, since I have, let's do 10, just so I can show you how to pull it closed. Again, I've got seven. Here's my eighth one. Okay. My tension is too tight because my yarn ball. Okay. So that's eight. Let me do two more. That's the ninth one. And here's the tenth one. Oh, come on. It's my tenth one. Okay. Now. Here's your tail to close this shut. Okay. You want to take this, move that aside and take your, hold that right here and start pulling your chain, your tail till it closes. Okay. Till it closes kind of snugly a little bit so that this hole gets closed in. Okay. So you're pulling it, not the working yarn. Let me get that out of the way. You're pulling your tail. To close your ring okay and see it's completely shut no holes in there and then from here what you're going to do now is you've got I've got one two three that's my first double crochet right so it's chain three so what I'm going to do to close this up I'm going to go into the chain three space here's the one two and three I'm going to insert my hook in that space and then I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, oops, come on, Oop, pull through and then, oops, grabbed the wrong, huh, that was funny, that was literally very funny, grab the wrong one, <laughs> grab the tail, okay, here we go. Once again, here's my chain three. At the top of that chain, that's the chain three. I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, and complete a slip stitch. There you go. That's the slip stitch. And now just kind of tug it, and there's your complete circle. Now, if the hole wants to come open, all you do you take your tail and then just tug on it a little bit and that will continue to seal your circle because this has a tendency to open until you've until you have weaved it in to the back okay so there is I'm gonna pull this out this is the circle using your magic ring not the chain three I like this method better. I prefer it, you know, but a lot of people though, well, I did struggle, honestly, I struggled you doing this because I couldn't just, I just couldn't learn how to get it right and it'd come undone and I got so frustrated. So I went to the chain, the chain ring, which is a, um, your, what do they call it now? Your slip knot. Or you slip your loose, um, what does that call it? Slip knot. Yes. And then you chain four. I, it, that was simpler for me until I decided 
I'm going to overcome it and defeat this this inability and make it an ability to you see how the yarn grabs onto all this stuff and moves everything that's why I like to use that so it's not sliding off the table so anyway I hope I was in frame this whole time if I wasn't I will do this again but this I think is the most important beginning you've got to begin with this right here and also okay you need to let me see if I can use this yarn let me take it out isn't this pretty it's called tobacco and this I got from Hobby Lobby and this was $4.99 as well yeah $4.99 and I think it was called tobacco oh so autumny right okay let me see now this is what you also need to practice okay because when you're doing scarves or even pumpkins you need to know how to do this very well and get to know what your tension is okay because if your your work calls for a chain of 10 okay and you start off really tight and then you go to your second row and it's looser your work is going to be uneven it's going to actually go up like this it'll start your work will start going like this because the tension on the first row is super tight so you want to get used to what your tension is so if I'm going to keep my row this width of this paper I want to make sure that the tension isn't super tight to where it's shrunk in see if this is my goal my tension is from here to here firm but you know loose but and I start crocheting all my chains and it ends up this small because of my tension was too tight the goal is to keep it your length like this so depending on how you work if your tension seems to be tight they say to go up one a hook okay go up one but if your tension here is good then you keep at it okay so let's do that see I'm still trying to get um it is called your slip knot <laughs> okay so here again let's get your tail slip knot hold on to it get your back loop pull it over get your, this loop now pull it over through your finger and that and that is that and then you slip knot and pull your tail okay so what I do is I get my little pinky oops it's stuck on my ring and then I'm gonna pull on under hold on to my knot okay see this already is the tension on my hook this is what I want if you do it too tight if you squeeze it too tight you're gonna very find it very difficult to pull your hook through and you know inserting and looping inserting and looping so here's this I'm holding on to this knot okay but here's my tension already so when I bring it all the way up I'm going to bring it down okay and I'm holding it with my finger that's one then bringing it up bringing it through that's two three four oops four see my tension is loose and then you can bring your finger up and hold this and continue to make your hooks I mean your loops your chains <laughs> I'm chaining okay and I'm chaining by lifting your your hook all the way up forward it almost guarantees that your your hooks gonna your chains are gonna be all the same size then move your finger up 
bring it through okay and if you need to yarn to increase get your yarn more of your yarn just hang on to it just like that hang on to it okay and get your finger back into position your tension I'm looping my hand over so it's resting on my index finger and then I'll begin again so I'm gonna lift up my hook pull through yarn over pull through this guarantees look at that can you tell that is the same size stitch all the way around okay now I suggest you practicing on that um, and then I let me show you I'm going to I'm going to actually no you need to learn this hold on to your loop with your finger index finger and then hang on to this let me get my hand correctly hang on to your chain bring your hook, uh, yarn over and pull it through yarn over pull through bring your finger oh that one's a little loose let's start back here that wasn't a good example was it okay it's caught on our green see that okay so I'm gonna get my tension right on my hook I'm gonna hold it here my tension is right I'm gonna yarn over bring it through yarn over bring it through Holding it, yarn over, bring it through, yarn over, bring it through, yarn over, pulling through, and there's my chain. So practice that, okay? Um, it's so important. This because when I was trying to just jump right in and just do it, watch the turn. I didn't know the terms. And I was going crazy because I'm like, what is it? So what I did, I kept going to other videos where I thought, okay, I saw that before. I'm going to go to that and see how they did that. And then they'd come back and I'm lost. Okay, so it is essential to learn to control your hook and how you're chaining okay get to uh, get to know what your your tension is like because everybody is different you know and the way you would hold your your thread you know get used to a lot of, okay where's let's get this one i've seen people do this okay let's see where i'm at oh my gosh an hour oh boy i was not planning on it being an hour it's almost an hour so let me finish with this um, okay if I'm going to I'm gonna make a no let's do it let's do a chain here's my loop my okay now for me here's me this is the way I work like I'm using a knife I'm cutting do you see that I'm cutting see I come over start looping um, like I'm cutting a knife people well, machine gun fingers they'll hold it like this okay and they'll loop over and bring it through see I'm not used to that I, I can't get into that okay so they'll come over and and hold it like this and and do this my tension seems to be so tight but I mean you can get used to it and then you come forward pull through pull through ooh, and then pull through this I think I, and here's my chain work which is not bad but sometimes I want to change this because of my fatigue except I, I have arthritis and so I want to change, interchange 
the way I hold the hooks. But once I start chain, changing it, it begins to, I have tighter, see? See, okay, so I don't know, maybe they go like this, no. They go like, it's like they hold it way back here they go like this. Maybe that's what oh, I need practice on. And pushing through all the way up is guaranteed to keep your gauges the same. See that? My gauge is the same. But those stitches are a bit tighter. So you've got to get used to which way. I forget what they call this. That the way they hold it but I know this I've heard it referenced as like you're holding a knife <laughs> so that's my that's where I want to you where you need to begin practice the magic ring practice your chain ring by creating a loop your slip knot and then chaining four okay then you um, yarn over and pull through and slip knot Okay, and then try, well, you, I'm hoping this video is, was clear, okay, because I've had to zoom in. My lighting started off really poor, but please let me know in the comments below if it was okay. And tell me I need to do it over again to help you, okay? But, and then practice your chains, and that way we can get into a project. I think I'm going to change this one to something like this because this was a single crochet you can even do this in a double crochet double crochet will just get you around a lot faster because <laughs> they're longer stitches right um and you do other methods like increases you know single crochet increase which means two single crochets and one stitch things like that that terminology you're gonna need to learn see as you could tell that was my beginning work i forgot to before I tied off, pulled it through so this was closed shut. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys, I, ho I hope that's helpful. I'd like to keep doing this um, in hopes that we can start crocheting some projects together. How fun would that be, right? Yeah, because I'm new. Like I said, one month. I've already done intermediate, beginner, intermediate, and advanced work, as you can see on my um, junk journal depot on my Facebook channel. That's my Facebook group um, In there in that group is the PDF go get it for free. Okay, and start learning The process now if you have any questions send me a, a message on my Channel and I will hone in on that and we'll point it out and do it together Okay so anyway, thank you guys for um, being patient with me, following along, and let's just have some fun doing this because I just, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Literally, I'm hooked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. So I will talk to you later, okay? Thank you again. Please like, and if you're new, subscribe. Please leave me a comment. I guess it's all about the algorithm. I'd like to keep drawing some more traffic into my site because it's fun to talk to people. Anyway, take care. Have a good evening. Bye.